Hello Capricorn and welcome to your Capricorn November 2021 reading and predictions. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James for those of you who are stopping by for the first time and to the subscribers. Much love, much love and affection to you. Do you know, I, I see you as being part of my extended family. Truly I do. And I get such, I have such gratitude that you, you stop by each month and we can spend this time together. So I hope you are doing well. Uh, incidentally, your annual calendar 2022 reading will be published on Thursday the 14th of October at 6 p.m. US Eastern. Uh, if you're a subscriber, of course, it comes straight through to you. Uh, but if you're not, you can go onto the playlist depending on when you're looking at this. Well, it'll, it'll be there for the next few months anyway. But go onto the playlist, my playlist, and hit the playlist thing and it'll just show up down the sides. I'll have the, the, this month's reading, the month before, and uh, the annual readings will be there just in a, a list on the side. Click the link and it'll take you into the 12 signs for that calendar year and I think you'll really enjoy it. But why don't we now choose five cards? This is a deck called the Golden Circle Tarot. It's an independent deck. Um, I got it off Kickstarter from the artist Beth Martini in Chicago. Uh, I'm sure if you search for it and if you've got someone who looking for a Christmas gift for somebody who's into this sort of thing, then I, I highly recommend it. It's got a lot of features and quality, which, you know, like bags and boxes and pins and all this sort of stuff, which is great for all those uh, people who love all that stuff. But what I love uh, about it is, uh, is that I just respond to, well, I never buy decks, you see, that's the thing. I get given decks and I bought this because a couple of the pictures that I, sh uh, that I saw on Kickstarter, they just really, they really spoke to me and I said, well, I'll have this. And the poor girl, I mean, she climbed over broken glass and barbed wire to actually make these things come to reality over about a 12 month period. And they turned up at my place yesterday. So now I'm doing the reading with them for you. So let's see what there is in store, shall we, for this month for you. There is the Empress. That's a great, great card, I must say. I'm pleased to say. There is the Five of Cups. There is the High Priestess. Great. There is the King of Pentacles. You might be able to tell me who some of these people are in here. I think they could be famous people. And there is the Sun. Well, gee, it doesn't really get much better than this. This is actually, oh, I'm starting to get the tingles already. Why don't you hurry up, come down, sit down next to me. We'll have a good close look at these cards together while I do the reading for you. All right, now I think you can see those. I've drawn one, two, three, four, five. Let's look at, now we don't have to read them in that order, of course, but that's how they were drawn, but I might do. Let's have a look at this King of Pentacles here, which I have a suspicion is going to be a good energy for you. Let me get the vibe. Look, I'm getting a lot of Leo around here and a lot of Virgo as well. I think that they are going to be important to you during this period here. Now, this King of Pentacles or coins as he is, Pentacles, King of Pentacles is is father of the physical world, mastering material success and well-being. He embodies the elements esoterically of fire or spirit and earth, the body, balancing and integrating the fiery masculine life force with the feminine energy of Mother Earth, harvesting both material abundance and spiritual fulfillment. This king is the master of manifestation and success. And he challenges the divine light of spirit, infusing it into matter, producing a treasure trove of bounty for you. He is in tune with nature and the elements of the earth. His mission is to create heaven on earth. The king's message to you is to align mind, body, and soul, and spirit with divine light. Become a vessel of brilliance and follow 
the path of evolution in the material world, the king is an example of living a full creative life on earth without struggle and pain. Uh, he is a sensual being. So I see you being sensual, enjoying and sharing the wealth and luxuries life has brought him. He brings remembrance of the magic that one can create in their life. Now the king is basically almost an avatar of abundance and prosperity in the physical realm. His success and wealth come from his strong focus and commitment. When he sets his mind on a goal, it will happen. Now he is a strategic thinker and planner with very high standards, as well as understanding the law of universal timing. Now the king is a stable, trustworthy, wise person whose heart is generous, supportive and open. He is strong and a confident leader. Following his soul's purpose, or as a Hindu audience will know, his Dharma on earth, he has created a safe and flourishing kingdom surrounded by beauty that is full of opportunity. Now, he has entered as the first card for you, and he indicates a time of success and prosperity. Maybe a, an inheritance, certainly an accomplishment, perhaps a promotion, a raise, so maybe a financial gain is coming to your way. The king brings good health and physical recovery from illness. And he asks you to listen to your body. Do your diet or personal habits need attention? Your home and environment become really very important to you, I think, at this time. You have an impulse to create a beautiful, serene and welcoming home. Maybe you want to remodel landscape or plant a garden. The king inspires you to be out in nature also. Breathe in the air and take in all the beauty. He reminds you that working with earth's soil grounds scattered energy that is within you and brings peace to your soul. Now you may find an interest in the medicinal remedies of plants and herbs, actually. I can see you looking into that. But his message really is to find harmony in all the facets of yourself, and you will find abundance and well-being. Now, on this top line here, there's an interesting card. Let's have a look at it. Such good cards here. What has this one got to say? What is it? That's oh, the Five of Cups. This is Mars in the first decanate of Pisces. The thing is, though, unfortunately, we also have Mars associated, for me anyway, mystically, with the planet of Mars. And there is a double Mars here. And so that double fiery energy serves to really destabilize the, the water of... Uh, of Scorpio. Did I say Pisces before or Scorpio? I, I mean Scorpio. That's the, the water side. So the, the waters of, a, of Scorpio, the emotions sort of evaporate and things become dry. I'm thinking that this is talking to you about how to handle things about what has happened. It's not going to talk about things that are going to happen, but how you should think about things that have happened going forward during this period. Because perhaps in the past you have had a deep loss or disappointment. But of course you realize that, that, that those things bring the opportunity to heal and transform pain into hope and promise. Now, whether that's been a material loss, such as money, possession, work, a person or relationship, or a non-material loss, such as aspirations, expectations, opportunities, big or small, there is a part of you that has departed bringing sorrow as you maybe try to grasp what has happened sadness becomes your focus your focus and the need to fill the 
dark void of loss can be overwhelming. Well, the key to the Five of Cups in this situation is really to use these five steps. Firstly, acknowledge your lost, your loss. Secondly, locate the cause of the pain and embrace the emotions. Don't flee from them, but embrace them. Third, forgive yourself, yourself, and also forgive others. Fourth, accept the loss and begin to heal. And fifth, allow the divine spirit to fill your heart with light, to empower your total being. The gift of the Five of Cups transforms your perception, bringing renewal and seeing life in a new light. The Five of Cups really offers two choices. And I'll bring this in closer again. You can either focus on the three spilt cups of loss, sadness, and disappointment, staying in the place of sorrow and regret, or you can shift your pers perspective from the painful past experience to embrace the two cups of light and stability, love and new beginnings. The two full cups symbolize what is good and true in your life. They contain the magical elixir of spiritual and emotional strength the three spilled cups symbolize what needs to be cleansed out of your life. Well, the challenge here, I think, is to learn to trust your heart again, or alternatively, grow a new heart. If you allow the emotions to be confronted and embraced by the heart, then you will overcome. Tears release negative emotions, cleansing sadness, neutralizing it and releasing it. Within the heart is a special garden of remembrance, really, where it holds all experiences, honoring each one for the lessons and the gifts that came from them. You just need to look to see where the jewels lie. With each gift, your heart and life become fuller, bringing healing and, and a shining light to a brighter future. I suppose the Five of Cups talks about some tough lessons that have been provided, but it does give you the chance to emotionally cleanse, to let go and transform past patterns that lead to struggles and disappointment. Let go of the past. Regretting past actions will only throw you into a tailspin of repeating unsupportive emotional patterns. We'll let this five help you shift your perspective from despair to that of peace. Now, where might we go? Why don't we go here? Gee, this is an interesting depiction of the High Priestess, isn't it, for a change? Now look, you see this woman sitting here with this hat on in full garb. Uh, start to look between two columns, one dark and one light. Now here is a curtain or a veil here, and here is a path going off into what looks like a very enticing, wonderful and beautiful garden. Have you ever taken that path to that garden? Well, the High Priestess here seems to me to be the maiden, maiden goddess in the cycles of the moon. The first phase of the triple goddess. She has a 
silent, mysterious power that can look into your soul. The priestess has a deep wisdom and intuition. She contains all knowledge, but at a level that can only be expressed in symbols. Difficult to put it in language. Now, this is very often referred to as the psychic card, and you may find that you have some degree of psychic awareness during this period. She is the feminine principle that balances the masculine principle of the magician. The high priestess's number here is two, and that symbolizes balance and choices. Now, she can, I think, pass backwards and forwards through that veil or curtain that's there. This curtain is the passage between the conscious and the unconscious realms. The High Priestess guards it well. The High Priestess helps us clarify our purpose and our potentials as you peel back the layers of your personal curtain or veil. You move deeper into your inner self, discovering your connection to the realm of spirit and soul memory. The priestess watches over the hidden knowledge, dreams of what is beyond the seemingly obvious. She is the doorway or the channel for universal mysteries that lay hidden behind this veil there. The priestess is the link between the seen and the unseen. She balances the polarities of the masculine and feminine, the light, the dark, spirit and matter, tapping into intuition and inherent knowledge. The high priestess keeps these dualities in balance, understanding the continuous cycling and rebalancing of life's forces and experiences. Now, one of the priestess's virtues is patience. She doesn't push. She waits in the stillness of silence, listening for the whisper of the divine. Now, with the high priestess, you realize all answers lie within you. She says, take time to meditate. Dive deep into the stillness of your soul and just listen. The High Priestess brings harmony and balance to a situation that may have been out of sync. She represents the beginning of creative cycles. She brings time for self-reflection and integrating opposing aspects of the self. The Priestess signals a time of going within, experiencing your dark, mysterious, self-balancing uh, and then balancing that experience with your conscious self. Because understanding and honoring both realms can unveil the doorway to the inner oasis of your soul. Now, I think we have what left. Here we go. We have this Empress. Let's have a look at her. Gee, isn't this an icon? This is going to go down as one of the iconic cards of tarot, I think. What a wonderful... That, gee, as is this sun card here. This is another one when I get to it. Both very iconic cards. Now, she, in her right hand, the Empress holds a rose-coloured stone etched with the symbol of Venus. In her left, she holds a scepter, symbol of her power and allure. Now, on her head is a crown of... 12, 12, what's this? Yeah, 12, 12 representing, 12 stars representing her connection to the zodiac and seasons, and a 13th symbolizing her connection to the mystical realm. Now, the Empress is the great mother, Mother Earth, the universal mother, the eternal mother, the goddess of love, beauty, and abundance, and creative power. She is passionate and sensual. She births life. She is the feminine creator manifesting nature's magic in the physical world, combining love with wisdom. Now she rules from the heart, I think, passions and desires. 
The Empress symbolizes nature, fertility, birth, motherhood, nurturing, harmony, and sensuality. She signifies the importance of living in harmony with the earth and its creatures, awakening your spiritual responsibility to keep a clear perspective on the evolution of both yourself and other people and the earth. Now she is cyclic like nature, representing the process of renewal, I think. Through her, life force is birthed into the world of form. The Empress is the revolving door of creation and manifestation. All living creations spring forth from her and return to her. She symbolizes fertility, motherhood, abundance and creation. Now her message is to love and understand yourself as well as those around you. Open up your heart, live and make your choices in life with love in your heart. Honor and live your heartfelt desires. They will guide you to a full and abundant life. Honor nature, bringing more of it into your life. The Empress whispers not to be afraid of your sensuality and passions and live life to the fullest. She allows her imagination to blossom with ideas and she gives those ideas attention, nurturing them until they have come into fruition. She's always pregnant with the spiraling energy of life and creativity. And she deeply loves nature and her love is always unconditional and true. She combines all that we know and love in our world, holding everything precious and dear. Nothing goes unanswered. Her shield of love shelters and protects you at this time. Her gifts are strength, passion and creation. Live life through love and understanding and you will heal. Let her energy spiral through your being. Watch your imagination soar in unlimited creative directions. Be clear about what you want. See your ideas and dreams manifest into form. Plant your seed with the Empress's passion and love and watch it grow. Your creation will rise over the horizon like the full moon, illuminating the magical night sky. The Empress brings gifts of abundance, harvest, good fortune. And remember, you are the creator of your world. Now that takes us, I think, finally to this other most beautiful, iconic looking card that will be remembered everywhere, I think. This is the Sun card. Major Arcana 19. Now here we have a little girl with plants for, for hair and sunflowers going behind her. And here is, well, a stone construction, not dissimilar to Stonehenge in England and the sun of, I assume, the winter solstice rising. The winter solstice round about the 25th of December when the days start to become longer again. Now, the December the 25th, of course, was the feast of the Roman god Sol Invictus, which is the unconquerable sun. And it's the birthday of Jesus Christ. It's the birthday of the ancient Greek um, Dionysius. And it's also the birthday of the god Mithra from Iran. Very much that solar energy bringing light back into the world. This is symbolic of the divine. The ancient Egyptians weren't stupid. People who don't worship a star in the sky, but they saw it as being symbolic of or an avatar of the, the divine. This sun really symbolizes the divine marriage of the self with God. When the sun is shining, everything becomes simple and joyous. The sun feeds your life force. It makes you feel better. The warmth of the sun nourishes and heals your soul and body. The sun is energetic, motivating, creative, active and transformative. It brings a renewed feeling to life. The sun is constant, rising every day. Now the sun's number here is 19. And that is the number of success. 
attainment, happiness, harmony, healing, wisdom, and fire energy. And the sun symbolizes knowledge filled with light, love, and wisdom. It integrates the opposite poles of light and dark, balancing and blending the conscious and the subconscious. The sun brings enlightenment, which is an experience, not an idea. Enlightenment will, enlightenment will shine through your eyes. Enlightened eyes experience the world as spiritual and eternal, rather than the drudgery of day-to-day -day experiences of life's endless chores. So the challenges of the sun are to have faith, to trust and to know yourself and others. And by listening to your divine inner child, you will thrive rather than just surviving, manifesting on limitations and restrictions. You will see what is working and integrated within your life. When you are able to trust and have faith in yourself, balancing and blending your dualities, you move to a higher spiritual, what I call it, a, a higher spiritual realization, really, resulting in, oh, new supportive perspectives and a rebirth of yourself. Now the sun represents reaching a new joyous level as you come out of a trying time in your life. It's a turning point for you. The sun is going to eliminate your path forward. It's bringing success, happiness, and joy. Your heart opens with trust, faith, and hope. You are healed, energized, alive with creative ideas and goals that you want to share with other people. Community may even become important to you. The sun shines with the energy of your twin flame. You realize that your life force can always be regenerated by the light of God, the Creator. Let the sun shine in. Let your light shine out and feel the unity with all. Let your inner child play and dance with the unlimited opportunities that this world and universe has given you without you doing anything for it, and even without asking for it, you are alive and rejoice. That's the way it is for you this month. Ah, oh, well, there you go. Beautiful, beautiful images, really, aren't they? Did you, didn't you enjoy that? I certainly enjoyed providing it to you. It was my pleasure and privilege to do so. And, uh, and I'm really looking forward to seeing you again. Don't forget the annual reading that's there, as I mentioned. Have a look at that. But in the meantime, remember one thing, and remember it's this, and it is that you are a legend. And I look forward to seeing you again next month. Until then, it's bye for now. <laughs>